Hi guys, I just wanted to point out a property that I looked at the other day for a, a new customer. And what I mainly want to talk about is the, the fact that this is a terrific property, an example of a good property to buy if you're looking for a piece of hunting land. I'm going to zoom out and you can see that it's, it's in upstate New York and it's cut up with uh, wood lots in in the, in the square mile around it, this is 160 acres. There's different kinds of fields, patches of woods. Uh, most of these roads are just dirt roads. So it's really out in the boonies and there are plenty of places that can house deer, supply deer to this property. And then all we have to do is set up the property to attract deer during hunting season from the neighbors. Now the way we do that, most of these fields are uh, corn silage for cows. So in the middle of September, all the food and cover is gone off those areas. On this property, we have plenty of water. There's a pond here, there's a small pond over here. We have cover. Um, this whole area has been hinge cut and harvested a little bit all through here and there's good stump sprouts in there growing for browse and lots of cover on the ground so what we're going to add to that is a, an edge harvest here prevailing wind comes from the northwest and cuts across this way so the setup is when he comes to hunt he gets into his clothes in the barn here. It usually goes up this way. I think I got him talked into going around the road, okay, and then cut right through this field. This field now, it was fallow, but he rented it to a farmer. He's going to put corn in there. So that corn in hunting season will be bare ground. So you can come upwind from this point and because of the terrain, you'd be unseen all the way out to the middle. And he's got a stand right in here. Well, actually, right here, you can see it. He's got a little fort stand there. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is put soybeans, soybeans, soybeans in these fields. There's a, there's a brush row along here. And then talk to the farmer about leaving a two and a half acre strip of corn here. That way that corn is linear and can draw deer along it to the main food source, which is the soybeans. Once the, so the uh, corn is off and whatever soybeans might be around, they don't really grow a lot of soybean up there. Once they take this corn off, these soybean fields, which amount to about four and a half acres, they're going to be a huge draw. Plus, you have some corn, and then he has clover here, and we'll probably put some clover up along here. I would say that any deer within a square mile of this spot is going to end up somewhere crossing in here. It almost has to, just because of the terrain, the cover that's here. You can see the travel corridors through the woods. You know, deer pretty much has to go traveling like this okay there's some woods over here and a deer can travel up this way but this is going to be all open field this is fallow in here wood lot here so during the rut this is going to be a pretty good hot spot does have to come here to feed it's going to be the best food in the neighborhood but anyway I'm, i got sidetracked what I wanted to show you was the fact that here's a property that has two uh, roadless sides to it. It's pretty square. You can, if your cabin was down here by the road, you can stack cover all the way up this hill to the back and be away from your, your camp. You don't want to have your camp in the middle of the property. And you don't want roads all around it. Very, very secluded when you get up into this corner. 
And then you need to look at what's going on in the neighborhood. These guys drive deer through the woods. Uh, there's some guys from New England somewhere that have a, this property is owned by some guys from New Jersey or something. New England over here. So they just come in for hunting season. So it's pretty quiet around there. You can imagine that a lot of deer can live in the area and they do. But these guys, you know, they hunt the usual way, stink up the woods, put on drives. And all you have to do is set up your property to be a better habitat and keep it nice and quiet. And that will collect deer all through the hunting season. So there you go. That's a good example. Um, let's see if I can pause. Here's another example. This one is 235 acres. There's some things right with this and some things wrong with it. So what's good about it is that you have state land. There's 300,000 acres of state land there. There's a hunting club here, hunting club here, and a hunting club here. So large tracks, not a lot of hunting pressure. You should be able to set this up very well with the terrain and some of the old fields up here that we have to work with. Um, we did clear out a food plot up here. This is a really good spot up here. And, uh, we have a destination food plot over this way. So lots of cover with this pine that grew in and some big flats with uh, drop offs and military ridges that a deer can hide out on and bed down in. So you can make bedding areas all through here and all along here. This is all good bedding. This is uh, thick pine so deer will run in there for escape cover. This is thick pine over on the other property. That's actually super thick all through there. Now this is a property that I actually hunt on and where I usually kill a deer is up here because these guys will come in, scare deer out, and they want to head up here to this ridge and I can head them off as they go up there. Here's what's wrong with this property. There's a public road that's pretty busy all along here. Um, also, the same property owner has this tract and this tract. And they're allowed to drive right up through here. There's a road going right around, goes around all your cover and like that. And they hunt this. So all day long, you have four wheeler traffic going right up through your land. So if you take a buffer of, let's say a hundred yards even, between, you can't really see the road here, I'll draw it. Let's see if I can draw this. Line. road goes along here kind of like that and along this property line so if you take a hundred yards out of either side of that then you can take away quite a bit of your acreage. Your destination food plot is right here. That's the only place that we can really put any big fields into this property. Soils are all pretty bad up in the woods, but this is an old farm, so you can put some good chow in there. The problem is that deer don't want to use it in the daytime because these guys are back and forth all day with their four wheelers and trucks and talking loud and whatnot. So. That's no good. Then you have this road cutting across here. So that takes away quite a bit of your land over here. 
where it's just not quiet. It's not quiet enough for any big buck to want to live there. So big bucks don't exist here. Uh, there's very little chance of getting a nice one. So I would say that you could make things better, but you always want to make sure you know what's going on in your neighborhood. A lot of hunting pressure all around here from the clubs and lots of busy traffic cutting across your place. So that's no good. Here's a spot that I like a lot. It's a hundred acre tract altogether. So this used to be a trailer park, but it's not there anymore. It's a campground now. And in the back of this property is a river. So you have this whole river bottom full of super thick swampy cover. This is all good deer cover all through here. Doesn't get a lot of hunting pressure. There's a farm next door. This is uh, a cornfield. More woods and swamp over here. And then there's a mountain over here with woods mountain over here so there's plenty of places that deer can come from there's a never-ending supply of deer and what we're doing on this property is putting in some big food plots in here these are going to be like eight acres so there's going to be plenty of chow when this corn comes off when he takes the silage off that's all clean farming, so there's only a couple handfuls of corn out there. When that's gone, and we have soybeans and sunflowers and clover and everything growing over here, beans, peas, we may even get some corn in. We're going to see if we can get this farmer to put corn in here and leave it. Every deer in the world is going to come here because they have plenty of food and cover. All this is good bedding all through here. Plenty of chow. So if you keep things quiet and you don't hunt down in here, and people are hunting all, all along the river and over here, you're going to start collecting deer because you have the chow, the cover, and the solitude. And then you set up your hunting along here on the downwind side. The wind is usually going this way. So there's a property you can set up to kill whatever you want to kill. I mean, you could get doe tags and shoot deer all day long in there. Now, whether there's big ones around, I don't know. That remains to be seen. You might be able to grow a big one. It's not big enough to grow your own deer, but if you can get a co-op going on, on the either side of you, to do uh, quality deer management, you may be able to have a beautiful hunting spot there. Now this is the best tract I've seen in a while. It's way out in the boonies in Pennsylvania. This is all state land up here, mountain ground over here, tiny little farms. There's very little going on back here. got a pond for water there's a creek along here as well so this property is easy to set up because it's an old farm hasn't been farmed in a long time so we're going to rehab some of this ag land this is all overgrown with thick invasive stuff so we've got some plans here we're going to do a little switchgrass a little warm season forage, cool season forage, some mowing, switchgrass, you know, doe bedding down here, buck bedding up here on the ridge. This can all be set up very nice to house bucks and draw a lot of deer in from the state land to this place because this is going to be your best food in the neighborhood and you'll have nice quiet cover up on top here. The other thing is that you can sneak up on the downwind side on state land, stay completely off the property, 
and then cut in and hunt. Okay, so you would go up from the road, you jump in in this little patch of woods here and be downwind of your whole place. The deer could be totally undisturbed here and be drawn out of that to the food. Bucks will be coming down from here to the food and the does. It can easily be set up to hunt very effectively. So that's just a couple of um, tips, I guess, to take a look at what's going on when you see a property that's for sale and you wanna know whether you can uh, set it up to hunt really well. Uh, there's some good things to look for. Uh, a place to draw deer from, a place to put food and cover, and a way to hunt it, a way to sneak in and, and hunt it effectively. So once you have those three things, then it's a buy. Now, the bonus would be if you've got some nice timber up here, you can get some of your money back out of the timber, do a proper timber harvest that includes a lot of TSI and deer cover. All right, so that's about it for now. Um, call me if you want to consult on purchasing a hunting property or if you're looking for property in central pennsylvania i'm a realtor here uh, give me a call and uh, let me know if i can help you in any way all right see you guys later